Let's turn in our Bibles to Acts chapter 11, and beginning in 19, we'll read about the Church of Antioch. It's my favorite church. I think that we can have a favorite church, and this is mine. So in Acts chapter 11, verse 19, we read, Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. And the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. And news of this reached the ears of the church of Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. And so for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. And during this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. And this happened during the reign of Claudius. And the disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. And this they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Acts chapter 11. Now Acts chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. And in the church of Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menean who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. And so after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. In my home area, there is an eye clinic that treats people's eyes from cataracts to eye surgeries to giving them glasses. And this eye clinic was started by some Christians who had been missionaries, I believe, in Africa, and when they came back home, they started this eye clinic. And as you walk in the door to this eye clinic, there's a banner that at first is rather confusing. It says, the God physician heals works. And you look at that, and it's kind of puzzling. The God physician heals works. But then when you look more closely you see that it's communicating a mystery. It's saying that the physician works. God heals. And I really like this banner because it really speaks to us about all of life. It's so often as we do our responsibility, the physician works. We can trust God to do what only He can do. God heals. And so it is in the Church of Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 through 9. Paul talks about Apollos and Paul, how one planted and one watered, but it was God who gave the growth. And so there are those that pastor and they work hard at shepherding God's sheep. 
but it's God who is the great shepherd. And we could go on and on with the mystery of how God works in and through us. And it's great that one of the places He does this is the Church of Jesus Christ. As we plant the Gospel, as we water people with the Word of God, God gives the growth and God gets the glory. At the same time, Paul says in 1 Corinthians that he was a wise master builder, that he knew how to build a church. He knew what the essential parts of it were. And indeed, there are some principles of how churches work that we see in Scripture that we're going to see here in the Church of Antioch. And there's a ministry called Natural Church Development that has put this together in a very interesting way. And we're going to be looking at some of the things that they have to say as it relates to how churches develop. And Christian Schwartz is the author of Natural Church Development. He's a German Christian. He led a research study. And uh, he studied a thousand different churches and uh, all over the globe. And he was asking the question, what are the proven principles that globally apply to growing churches. And his team studied state churches and free churches. They studied urban churches and rural churches. They studied large churches and small churches. They studied all kinds of churches, every kind in a thousand different churches. And they were looking at what are the common principles that we can see as to how churches grow. And it was amazing to me that as I looked at the eight different essentials that you see on the blackboard that they came up with, or the green board, I saw how closely it paralleled the development of the Church of Antioch. And so what we're going to do is in this session is we're going to go through these eight different essentials of natural church development that were discovered by studying thousands of churches all over the, the world, and this has continued to now to study many more than a thousand churches. And we're going to just look at uh, the Church of Antioch through this lens, and we're going to discover that again in this church, as we watch the Holy Spirit plant this church and grow this church and multiply this church, there are common principles that we can see and that we can then look in our own church, our own local church, and see how we're doing in, in these different areas. The first area is need-oriented evangelism. And clearly, when Luke wants to record what God did in Antioch, he starts with evangelism. He starts with unnamed Christians who shared their faith, they talked about Jesus to their friends, and they did this especially across natural barriers. The big barrier then was the Jew-Gentile barrier. Today we have other kinds of barriers like rich people and poor people, older people and younger people, educated people and uneducated people, hard-working people, people that don't work at all, we have all kinds of different barriers, religion, race. And the great thing about this church of Antioch and the great thing about a church that's really healthy is they go over the barriers to share Jesus because Jesus is more important to them than in any of these things that naturally divide people. And so that's what was happening in Antioch. Need-oriented evangelism is not being pushy, but it's sharing the gospel in a way that meets real questions and the needs of non-Christian people. Now, there are historically seven acts of Christian mercy that are ways that we can meet the real needs of people. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, sheltering the homeless, caring for the orphan, tending the sick, visiting the prisoner, burying the dead. These are all different things that Christians do to show their love, and as they do, they tell people about Jesus. 
I want to tell you one story that's my favorite one as it relates to crossing a barrier to tell somebody about Christ. And it's the history of a friend of mine, one of the pastors of Moscow Bible Church, someone who has taught courses with Trinity Seminary, and his name is Oleg Shevkun. Oleg's story is a very interesting story. He grew up in the city of Moscow. He was uh, raised by his mom, who did a great job of raising him, and by the time of high school, he was one of the leaders on the campus of the high school there, and as you know, in Moscow, there are elementary schools and junior highs and high schools all clustered together and amidst the uh, high-rise apartment buildings. And Oleg went to one of these schools and he became a leader that the administration of the school respected. And one day they said to Oleg, we need you to go down to the second grade because there's a girl down there that's causing problems and we want you to straighten her out. And this was back before Perestroika. And so he went down, met this girl, and found out that the problem was is that this seven-year-old girl who loved Jesus was leading a lot of her classmates to faith in Jesus Christ. And so Oleg was supposed to kind of straighten her out. Well, over the next few weeks and over the next few months, Oleg got to know this little girl. And this seven-year-old girl crossed an age barrier, and she led Oleg to Jesus Christ. And years later, when Oleg had finished seminary and he came back to Moscow to be installed as the pastor of Moscow Bible Church, that little girl had grown up, and she attended that service. And she was the one that God used to cross a barrier to tell a person about Christ and what a great impact our leg has made. Well, that's one of the things that happens in a healthy church. That's the way churches develop. They start because people love to tell people about Jesus. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.